The stocks are testing a critical level here, but our next guest says a Santa Claus rally is still on the table. Let's bring in Steve Chavaron, the portfolio manager at Federated Investors. Hi, Melissa. How are you doing? Um, the time is uh, passing. Yeah. The clock is ticking. I mean, when is Santa Claus coming, Steve? Well, it's going to be a reindeer bumpy, on the roof. It's going to be a, a bumpy sleigh ride if he comes. I mean, I, I think. If he comes, if he I comes, thought, no, okay. Because here's what's going on. I think all the concerns that have been raised here are correct. It's a matter of degree, though. Our, our view is that, yes, the economy is slowing, rates are rising, inflation has built. We do not see a recession next year. We see an economic slowdown. In that environment, what's priced into the market here? The consumer still remains strong. Earnings growth, we still think, is going to be 5 to 10% next year. We think GDP growth is still 25 At some point, you've priced that in. You will find a bottom, and we think you can march higher. How long this volatility takes, though, is anyone's guess. And I think that's the push and pull on Wall Street right now, is that the fundamentals still remain okay going forward. But the volatility and the fact that we broke below some key support levels opens up more downside risk. And so you've got to be careful how you trade from here to there. Uh, have, have the markets priced in 5% earnings growth next year? I think the markets are pricing in a deceleration and uncertainty around that number. They don't understand what the impact of tariffs going to 25% are going to be on that earnings. If we do export controls next year, how do you price that in for some of the tech companies? And that uncertainty, I think if you knew for certain we were going to get 5% earnings growth, that's better than this uncertainty that we have right now. And that's why trade certainty really can help. Hold on, Steve. we got some breaking news on the sentencing of former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen. Let's get to Elon Moy in D.C. for the details. Elon. Melissa, New York prosecutors saying that Michael Cohen, President Trump's former personal attorney, should serve a substantial prison term after accusing him of financial crimes and of lying to Congress. Generally, he would face 51 to 63 months in prison. Now, the sentencing memo is important because it detailed the scope of Cohen's cooperation with prosecutors, and that cooperation appears appears to be limited. The memo says repeatedly that Cohen declined to provide full information about the scope of any additional criminal conduct in which he may have been engaged or had knowledge. It also said that he did provide useful information, but that he decided not to pursue full cooperation. Therefore, it said, the special counsel cannot say that his overall level of Cohen's cooperation to be significant. The prosecutors also suggested that his reasons for working with the special counsel's office may have been self-serving. It said any suggestions that his meetings with law enforcement reflect a selfless and unprompted about face are overstated. Guys, so Cohen has provided here only limited help. We also know that Manafort's plea deal in exchange for cooperation, that went sour. We're expecting to get some more details on that soon. The question now is whether this means Robert Mueller is getting the information that he is seeking. How far are we away from a conclusion to his report? We are still digging through all of these court documents, and we'll go back to you if we find anything else, Melissa. All right, Elon, thank you. Elon Moy in Washington. How does this impact the markets? Well, I, I do think that as much as we don't like to talk about politics in the context of a market show, I, I, I think that the White House this week is a factor. I think as much as we've seen turbulence and chaos in the past, I think whether it is that the Mueller probe is sensed to be coming to some kind of a conclusion, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen these resignations. I think the White House is, is a part of this. Steve, how do you view it? I mean, it certainly has the ability to cause volatility. I don't think it impacts the long-term direction of markets over right. the next kind of 12 to 24 months. But in the meantime, it can certainly cause these gyrations. Even the bickering inside the administration on something like trade and the good cop, bad cop routine that they play, you don't always know who to listen to, and the market's kind of just gyrating back and forth with it. It's short-term volatility, but it doesn't change the long-term picture. So how do, you, how do you recommend investors invest uh, yeah. over the next, let's say, half a year? Yeah. Look, you know we've been pretty bullish for a long time. We were 11% yeah. overweight equities in the summer. We brought that down all the way to under 4% today. This is not the time to be a hero, but you still should be pointed long. If a recession's not coming, if earnings growth of 5 or 10% is going to come through, you need to look at parts of the market that are really beaten up, the stuff that no one wants to buy right now. Parts of energy, parts of materials, parts of discretionary. Housing? Yeah, maybe. You know, you usually get a nice seasonal play on that coming out of kind of, the, you know, it's the Halloween to Super Bowl Sunday trade. If you get any pullback on rates, you know, there, there's value here. When it's really crapped out, buy a little bit.